First of all, thank you for coming and we appreciate you being here today. As we uh, at Samaritan Dutch Homeless Services are bringing the service live to those who aren't able to be here. And as we study God's word, we meet people right where they are, that they may grow and come to the knowledge in, in, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you're out there and you are wondering, or you have a Bible question, please contact us at Samaritan Touch Homeless Services. We'll be glad to entertain it and to answer it as best as God gives us knowledge. Today, we're going to be in the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. If you have your Bibles, we encourage you, follow along in your Bibles as we study on the Morning Touch Sunday Live. Welcome to the Morning Touch Sunday Live. Here's the Bible, says in the book of Joshua. We look and we find the Israelites under duress, surrounded by armies. But we know that God loved Israel and God took care of Israel. We don't expect any different outcome than what we're about to learn. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Leshes, and Eglon joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took positions against Gibeon and attacked it. The Gibeonites sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal, do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us. Isn't that the call of many who have no answers, who are surrounded by problems in life, who are surrounded by situations that don't seem to have an answer? We call out. We call out. We call out. Come quickly and save us. Help us because the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with the entire army, including all the best of his fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. You're marching against five kings. You're marching against five powerful armies. Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Not one. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them with a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, according to Beth Haran, and cut them off all the way to Azza and Machida. And they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Axila. The Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones that were ever killed by the swords of the Israelites. You see how God works? And in a moment, we're going to make some comments about how God works. God threw the hailstones, they came down, and it killed more than ever the Israelites could ever kill. On that day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence, O sun, stand still over Gibeon. O moon, over the valley of Ajalon. So the moon stood still. The sun stood still and the moon stopped. Till the nation avenged itself of its enemies. As it is written in the book of Joshua, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a man. There's never been a day before or since that the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. We want to make some comments and thoughts from the reading of God's word. May God add a blessing to those who hear and understand his word. But from Joshua chapter 10 verses 5 through 15, 
the day the sun stood still. Still at the request of Joshua to God. Joshua made a request. God heard his request. God listened. It seemed like they were at a period where they were overrun, they were surrounded, and they were going to be defeated. But God. If you're out there, I want you to say, but God. Because what we need to understand is our successes are successes as a result of God. Israel staring the jaw of defeat was able to come out in victory, but God. God demonstrated that though you be surrounded by enemy kings, Though it seems defeat is inevitable, though it seems the odds are stacked against you, though it seems that you are lost, but God, but God, God demonstrates here in this small example that he was in control, that he is in control. He demonstrates with the sun being held and the moon stopping. The sun stood still and the moon stopped. My friends, for a whole day, God held the sun and stopped the moon. And his measure of victory was broad and wide against the enemies of God. Israel's victory was great. The Bible even says God tossed in some hailstones to underline and underscore the victory. But God. In our own lives, we should be able to say, but God. God demonstrates to us in this one small example who's in control. He demonstrates in this example his omnipotence. His omnipotence, this creator God, stopped the sun. He held the moon for one full day. This powerful creator God who dropped the giant hailstones on those enemy armies, killing more than the Israelites could ever think or dream of killing in a battle. But God, my friends, there is something here for us to gain. That in 2023, our armies march against us. And I'm not talking about a physical army. I'm talking about the challenges of life. The things that you and I deal with each and every day march against us. And as those things march against us, we need to go back to verse 12. Verse 12 tells us. Joshua made an appeal and God listened. Verses 13 and 14, God listened. Joshua said, let the sun stand still. Let the moon stop. God not only did both of those, but he sent those large hailstones. You know, when we think about this great event, it is something to be held this God of ours. The fact that we need to understand that even in our challenges, God listens. It's the only time the Bible says that during this great instantaneous visit that we learn how God listens. This should be a strong message to us. It should be a strong message to us. A strong message, a strong takeaway. You and I have personal struggles. Amen? Amen. You and I, we have challenges. Amen. You and I walk through difficult times. Amen. You and I become overwhelmed by life Amen. and its challenges. But through our overwhelmed times, our frustration, our personal struggles, and our challenges, but God. 
but God. When it looks like we have nowhere else to turn to, every answer on every side is no. Our friends forsake us, but God, but God. God is one who always is there. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. All powerful and always with us. Let me tell you about God. Through our challenges, when it seems like there's no end and no answer, newsflash, in your frustration, but God. In your discouragement, but God. Have faith, because let me tell you about my God. My God doesn't have a hearing problem. Amen? Amen. He doesn't have a hearing problem. My God doesn't wear a hearing aid. Just as God fights and fought for Israel, God fights for you. We don't always know it. You know, there's some victories out there that we have in our life that we wonder, how did that happen? But God. When we get that answer that we think that's not coming, how did that happen? But God. When it seems that all is lost and the rescue comes over the horizon, but God. My friends, this is a day when we should think about the goodness and the power of God. And how he works in our life for our good. That's one thing I can say. He works in our life for our good. He fights for us. Listen, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31. Listen very carefully. It says, even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who hope in the Lord will soar on the wings of eagles. Those who hope in the Lord will run but not grow weary. Those who hope in the Lord will walk and not be faint. My friends, Amen. when frustration comes, when personal struggles happen, when challenges hit your life, when doubt raises its ugly head, you need to say to yourself, but God, but God, will I get tired? Yes. Will I grow weary? Yes. Will I be overrun? Yes. But God can stop the challenges in your life. God can make those doubts, those fears, those problems stand still, just like he made the sun and the moon stand still in the days of Israel. We grow tired. We grow weary. The heaviness overtakes us. But God can help you and me walk through that fog, live through the shadows. But God can help us when we're tired and it seems like we cannot make it another day. But God can make the difference when we feel so spiritually thirsty that we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We don't know who to turn to. We reach out and we reach up and we say, but God, help me. But God, rescue me. But God, like Joshua, we make that appeal and we say, but God, I need your help. But God, I need relief. But God, I need your help. My friends, we need to have the kind of faith to reach out, knowing that God will listen to us if we have an honest heart. God will open up to us. If we have that kind of spirit that says, God, I believe in you. God, I know you are the way. And Lord, lead me out of my trouble. Lead me out of my pain. Lead me out of my frustration. Lead me out of my doubt. But God, listen, he listened to Joshua. He'll listen to you and me. Amen. The Bible says that is one instance where God listened to man. And my friends, if there is an incident where the Bible tells us God will listen to us. He listened to Joshua. He will listen to you if you reach out and you reach up to him with an honest spirit and an honest heart. As a matter of fact, 
We are told God will fight for us. That's what Isaiah says in Isaiah 40, 30 and 31. Those who hope in the Lord, you don't have to fear. If you hope in the Lord, you don't have to worry. If you hope in the Lord, you can walk through the fogs of difficulty and walk through the challenges of life and walk through the personal struggles. He'll help you overcome. He'll make you an overcomer, my friends. When you don't think you can win the battle, when you don't think you can win the fight, he'll make you an overcomer. Because God will fight for the faithful. God will fight for those. Glory to his name, the song says. Glory to his precious name because he fights for us. My friends, God listens. God loves us. He loves us enough that he sent his son. That tells you right there, he'll listen. The message is simple. God listens. Our problem is we don't often talk to him like we should. We don't have that heart to heart, that sit down with him like we should. We think that we can take it on by ourselves or we don't take the time to know that he is there and he is ready to reach out. He is ready to make a difference. He is ready to change your life, your situation and your condition. He is ready. But we don't often have that heart to heart. We don't do what Joshua did and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, rescue me. My friends, we must have the faith in God's word to reach out and reach up. We must have the faith to talk with him. You know, there's a song out there that says, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. 